you probably know the theme song, and you've most likely heard the name. That's right, it's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are one of those things that, regardless of my age, were always there in the background in some way. Be it one of the many cartoon shows, movies, comics, video games, toys, they've been a staple in my life for as far back as I can remember. So growing up in the 90s, I was really at the tail end of the original TMNT cartoon. Uh, I remember catching a few episodes here and there, probably reruns, but not really something I watched on a daily basis or weekly basis, mostly because I never knew when it was really on. My most prolific memories of the show actually comes from a VHS tape, which I tried to find, but I have no idea where it is. Though, so if I'm remembering correctly, this one came along with it, which is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. What the heck was that? It looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat. You're going to look out of here, right? I found these at Factory to You a long time ago, maybe when I was around seven, and my mom bought them for me. And I actually have like a good memory from that. I just, I remember sitting here in my room. I remember I had my dresser like right around this area, TV just a little bit higher than this, sitting up, sitting there, watching it. Had my suitcase right next to me, was putting stuff away. Had my grandma uh, putting stuff away in her suitcase because we were going to drop her back off in her home in San Francisco the next day. And I just remember watching the show. And actually, while I was putting everything together for this video, uh, I put on a few episodes from volume two of the DVD. And the second episode in that was actually one of the episodes in that tape. The episode being when some weird alien crash lands on Earth. Uh, I guess he dies. I think he just disappears, but I'm pretty sure he dies. Talks about some crystal that Shredder ends up stalking the turtles, getting, and then ends up shrinking them. And I just, I remember the alien so, so clearly because of the weird voice he had. The eye of Zarnoth. <laughs> you must find the three fragments of the eye of Zarnoth. And watching it, I was just looking at it like, why is this so familiar? Isn't this alien voice from something else? No, it's from this episode. It's from this show. Why do I, I just, it just really clicked in my memory while watching it. I was like, wow, wow. I forgot about that, but I also remember it so clearly. It was definitely an experience. But more than anything, I remember this VHS tape, the movie, watching the movie every time we went to one of my dad's friend's houses. I really liked it, even the sequels, the second one and the third one. I don't remember the second one too much renting it, but I remember renting the third one a few times and watching it and enjoying it. I know it's probably the worst of the three, like the budget must have gone down so much, which is really odd. Damn! The costumes definitely took a downgrade and everything. Definitely not the best movie of those three, but I enjoyed it for what it was, and it's definitely better than that weird live action Fox thing they tried to do. Though they did meet the Power Rangers, which was actually, it, it was cool. I, I really liked that episode of the Power Rangers. Aside from that, I never really watched many of the other cartoon shows. The Next Mutation, I didn't even know was a thing. I had a figure of Leonardo from The Next Mutation. Didn't know that until a few years ago when I looked it up on the internet. Still have it. Love the figure. Great toy. Leonardo's always been my favorite, probably because of that toy. But like I said, I'd never watched the show. I didn't even know The Next Mutation was a show. Same with the TMNT show on Fox. By the time that thing came out, Pokemon, Dragon Ball, anime basically had arrived here in America and I was busy watching that stuff, you know, but that was where my intention went. It didn't, wasn't TMNT, which had this weird, darker look to it. It was Power Rangers, Pokemon, Digimon, Jackie Chan Adventures. I think I remember watching that. I think that was around the same time. So anyways, the main point of this video is to do a figure of photography of well, you guessed it, the turtles. I mean, it's in the title. You didn't really have to do that much thinking. I, I helped you out there. And I figured I would go with the turtles because although I can't say they were my favorite show growing up, I can't say they had like a super big influence in my life. They've always been there. They've always been in the background. And yeah, really nothing more to say about that subject, but let's move on to my plans for this video. So like I said, this is going to be a figure photography video and I'm gonna try and do more of these, some of them a little bit shorter where we just get into the photography itself and some where I just talk about my memories of the show first, like this one. 
kind of make them a little bit longer maybe if you're interested in it if not and all you want to do is watch the photography part i'll probably leave a timestamp in the comments or in the description and i'll mention it in the beginning of the next video or something maybe if i remember but anyways my plan here for this is to do an homage to the original teenage mutant ninja turtles cover the issue number one uh where they're on that building and i actually made a diorama for this i did right here this i did using foam core i believe the elmer's foam core and the Hobby Lobby foam core. So what I did was I took the pieces, measured everything, cut it to the right size, yada yada, you know, just regular stuff there. And um, for these corner pieces, again, it's more foam core, had to cut like a little triangle shape in it to make it turn and everything. And I definitely recommend using either the Elmer's or the Hobby Lobby foam core when doing something like this. You can use the dollar store stuff for let's say like the front here, the side here, the top and everything. But if you're gonna try and bend it, that foam core is definitely a lot more brittle. It's not as strong and it will most likely rip. Uh, this other one, I believe this was the Elmer's one. Not 100% sure, I don't remember which ones I used. It was kind of just a mix mash of random pieces I had laying around. All of this was just extra stuff from other stuff I was building. Color-wise, I went with the uh, colored version of the comic book for inspiration, which had the building kind of blue here. I did a black base coat and printed it over with the blue. I wasn't too much of a fan of how it came out, but in the end, I think it looks good. Anyways, I put all of this together using a Kleenex box as the base. And just remember, if you're gonna be doing something like this, definitely glue it onto your base first. Glue it onto a piece of cardboard, whatever it is you're gonna use, because the second you paint it, the foam will warp um, because of the paper on the front and the back. You can remove the paper in the back, but then the foam kind of loses its integrity and will start kind of like just flopping a little bit, especially that dollar store foam. So just, you know, a heads up there. This one did start to warp a little bit, but it doesn't matter. You're not really going to see it in any of the photos. And again, a simple Kleenex box and a scrap piece of insulation foam, just so everything is level to the right height and nothing hard. Did this in a day. Same with this one, made it right after it didn't take more than a day to do. I definitely burnt myself making this one. This one, I did use some Hobby Lobby windows. They're not glued in. I can take them off if I really want to so I can reuse them for other projects, but added them in here. They are working windows that move up and down. Again, did the same thing with the side here. Probably the most annoying and tedious thing was cutting up these pieces right on top here just for decoration. Sitting there trying to get them right, making sure that they came out okay, and then gluing them all on. I didn't have a Kleenex box for this one, so I had to make my own little base, which again, I used scrap pieces of insulation foam, measured everything, and just hot glued everything together. Again, I think I was just like pushing something in, and then my fingers slipped and I burnt myself, and that was not fun. So definitely try not to do that. I did have to add like an extra piece of foam here to level it off, but it works perfectly fine. From what I can tell in the pictures, those buildings they're standing on aren't brick buildings. And that's kind of like the final product right there. One lined up next to the other. That's going to be the base. Uh, I am going to use, use something to try and cover these windows. Uh, depending on how it comes out, I might have to darken it in Photoshop just so you don't see anything coming through, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. For now, this is what it is. Anyways, for the background, I am using a canvas, which I painted black and threw some white splattered dots on to kind of make it look a little bit starry, adding some light to the back of it to light it up. Uh, the light actually filters through the black that isn't shown and then some of the white little spots light up. It actually looks really cool, especially when you mess with the lighting and stuff. And yeah, let's move on to the figures and then get on to the actual photography. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will return after these messages. So here we have the different turtles I'm planning on using for this. We have, what, one, two, three, four sets of turtles here. So over here we have the original comic book first appearance version of the turtles, which I'm going to be using. The articulation on all these is going to be a little bit tricky because I do want to try and recreate the pose, but we'll see how that goes. Behind them we have the Rise of the Teeny MNT figures right there that I reviewed maybe two years ago. Now I wasn't sure what uh, Michelangelo's basic weapons are because both of them are glowing um just one of them has those weird things and the other one is a long stick um well not a long stick but it's it's all the things can you, you have the figures you know what i mean but yeah um gaben does because i just figured it'd be easier to pose and again we'll see how that goes 
Funny enough, I completely forgot that that Donatello has two left hands, because mine has a factory issue where it has two left hands. I, I never had that fixed, so there you go. Behind them, we have the 2000, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with 12, somewhere around there, 12, 13, the Nickelodeon version that pre-did the rise of the team and team ones. Yeah, I'm great at explaining things, aren't I? Let's see if I can focus in on them just a little bit. Uh, the Leonardo in that group isn't the Battleshield version, so he is definitely a lot bigger. I, I really don't think that photo is going to come out good at all, because he has no articulation in the knees. And we'll see how that goes. Over here on the front right, we have, it's like a mix between the classic ones and the new ones. Uh, these are the ones with the whited out eyes, and nothing much else to say there. I'm going to set everything up right now. I do need to put the lights behind everything and um, just again figure out the poses which is probably one of the most important things when taking action figure photography getting the pose right where it doesn't look unnatural where you know things aren't like wow yeah you're you that arm would be broken if you were taking it which I will say at least in the sense of photography it's easier than working with a model because you don't have to sit there and kind of tell them hey why don't you try this why don't you try that if they're not comfortable and you know it's just a figure so it's right there so it's a little bit easier in that sense but anyway let's move on to the actual picture taking itself we now return to teenage mutant ninja turtles Okay, so here I have my camera set up and ready. I kind of already messed with the posing a little bit and everything. I had to move some hands around so they weren't blocking the faces, but here we have them up close. Uh, Michelangelo, Raphael, which he can't really hold his side the way it is in the comic book. It is balancing on there. Hopefully it doesn't fall before I do this. Uh, Leonardo and Don's hello back there. They're perfectly fine. Uh, so the point is to take a few pictures at certain angles, like if I wanted to do something low like this, it's possible, but then I'll have to reposition a little bit, because again, blocking the face and everything, uh, the limbs and everything look fine, don't really have a problem with that. Here's the background lit up from behind, which the iPhone is actually doing a really good job at capturing the effect. I do have one light in the back behind me pointing upwards to kind of illuminate the room somewhat give this a glow because without it you won't be able to see any of this you'll be able to see the background pretty good but you won't see turtles or the foreground or anything at all i have them separated a pretty good amount and because the light is pointing up and casting light from above going down which i'll show right there light casting up bouncing back down bouncing back down here the shadow for the whole diorama on the turtles is actually downwards back here which is important because if I had the light straight forward, let's say with that light on, yeah, that's, aside from not being able to see the back, um, you can definitely see the shadow from the turtles. Not pretty at all. If I do the light from the bottom, which I kind of wanted to do, um, depending on the angle, you won't see it. You might see it, but definitely straight on, not going to work. Uh, I did try to use the green lights for the bottom, but it's too harsh it's too bright because the back here is definitely not lit up enough or as much as i would like it to be and i do have a good amount of lights back here let's just move back here and see we have three lights that other one right there i would have loved to actually have had facing the thing because i think it would have came out better and i might lower it right now see how that goes I have one here, one there, and one there. And the monitor is on, but it's, I don't think, doing anything for the shot. But all this to kind of light up. Again, you can see the white is pretty good. But what I really like is the fact that you can see where kind of I didn't fill in completely black, you know, everything. And uh, it gives it its own effect. It looks really cool. It is a little messed up over there. But, you know, I'm going to ignore that because it's not going to be in the shot, hopefully. But I can touch that up if I have to with some black paint. And yeah, I'm gonna try moving that light, like I said, and see if it looks any better. Okay, so I moved the light to the bottom right there, facing that way. And honestly, I do think it is making a pretty darn good difference. I haven't checked the actual camera yet, but yeah, that looks really nice. I actually had another idea I wanted to do. I made, is it right here? Like a cutout, you know, of like the buildings that were in the back. And I was thinking of doing something like that at one point, but uh, I just, I don't think it's going to work out. I don't think it's going to look good. 
Like I would have actually had to have painted and detailed this, which it wouldn't have been too hard. I would just like put a piece of cardboard going down on it and then taking off the paper, done the detail work and all that. But I feel like it's a lot more work than needs to be done for kind of a simple shot where you're not going to see it too much. Maybe in the future it's something I'll do, but for right now, going to try and keep it simple here. Uh, again, light in the back looks so much better. One of the main things about photography that you got to keep in mind is you're capturing light. Light is one of the most important things here. So get your light right, get your exposure right, and it'll look something like this, which honestly, even on here, just like that, maybe from that angle, somewhere around there, not bad at all. Again, do have to mess with the posing because Raphael sometimes blocks Michelangelo. But again, you know, easier than with a model where you can just like, don't have to bug them. Like, can you move this? Can you do that? It's, it's so much easier with action figures, but that's besides the point here again. Um, in case you're wondering, old computer monitor box on top of a tray to make it taller than the background. Because if it was level, I don't think it would look as good. Though, since I'm not getting it completely from the bottom, it might actually be okay. And I might get more of that. So I might lower it actually remove that box and lower it and see how that goes but i want to take a few pictures of it like this i do have my settings here in case anyone wants to see turn on info we have the shutter speed at 1 13th which is slow but i'm on a tripod i got the touch shutter on so i don't really have to do anything i don't have to worry about camera shake or anything like that my iso is actually really high at 6400 might mess with that and lower it um again it is low light and this camera does do decent in low light it shouldn't come out too grainy f-stop at 5.6 so that should be fine right there and um i am shooting in raw plus jpeg because always gotta have a backup you can see i'm underexposed by just a little bit over two stops let's make it a bit darker uh, it definitely looks darker on the screen than it does on the phone here. And again, dog snoring, but yeah, let's just see how this goes for a few shots. Okay, so reorientated things again. I cannot speak. I don't know why my allergies bug me more at night and I feel like, I just, yeah. But anyways, um, and you can see here the background actually does look a lot nicer this way. Um, definitely you can see more. I may move the table a little bit more to the right so you can see it just a little bit better, but I uh, kind of feel like I'm going to be cropping just a little bit into that maybe so it won't really matter as much. I don't know. Or I could actually, instead of moving that, as long as this doesn't get caught, move the camera. That's actually a lot better. I like that because then we get a little bit of that light behind Michelangelo. It looks a little bit nicer. Still trying to figure out what looks best here. Because I have all the turtles here in focus. Have the f-stop at 20 because I definitely want to make sure I get uh, Donatello and Michelangelo both in focus. Definitely want the background somewhat out of focus. And i um, going to try and do this again. Might switch to a different lens just to see um, how that goes. And... Uh, We'll just keep going here and then I'll set up for the next set of turtles. Okay, so I just switched things up and put my Helios 4 lens on there, which is a lot faster than the lens I was using a second ago. Have everything lined up. And actually, uh, this lens has a really good bokeh effect in the back where it makes things swirly. And um, I'm actually liking how the background looks here. So I'm going to take a few shots with this. You can see... The background there kind of curving just a little bit not too much it's a little subtle but it's definitely there and i think it definitely adds to it again this lens is a lot faster um don't remember exactly uh somewhere in the two-ish range uh my last one i think went down at the closest would have been like around four or something 4.8 maybe i don't know if that's right but somewhere around it's like a moderate lens something you definitely don't want to be using too much in low light this, I think, is going to be a lot better. Let's continue onwards with a few more shots of this. And I think I'm going to switch over to the 2012 Turtles. 
maybe just get them out of the way because i really don't think that's going to come out that great second set of turtles up and as much as i was saying i wasn't probably thinking it was going to look good it's actually coming out a lot nicer than i was expecting that looks actually really nice um i feel like i don't see enough of the sky behind Raphael from this angle so i might switch it up a little bit but i think that actually looks really good i was worried about the leonardo because again he's not the battle shell one it's a little bit bigger uh, less articulation but his pose is so simple that it, it does pull it off and in the kind of light that i have going on here and actually isn't that bad so i'm gonna take a picture of it from this angle and then switch things up a few times and see how it goes okay so next set of turtles is up and because they don't have the same weapons as the other ones i did switch things around a little bit and honestly it's only okay i'm not really liking what i'm seeing too much i think it's all right um i think it's as fast as it's going to get i'm only going to take a couple of shots of these uh because again i don't know just feels off these ones are a little bit harder to pose the articulation on them is a little weird i don't know what it is uh they're cool and all but i don't know just something something feels off not bad though i think it'll come out pretty good i think i got it angled right i have to switch a few things around Raphael kept blocking michelangelo and then donatello was looking a little bit off so i switched him a little bit to look more towards his camera and uh yeah i think that's as good as it's gonna get and i am tempted to put on the other weapons for everybody so it's all glowing and stuff i might do that just to switch things up because well i'm here doing this why not so once again, switch things up here and I actually kind of like this a little bit better. Everybody's weapons are a little bit translucent and they have a little bit of a glowy effect in the frame here. And definitely something I can bring out in Photoshop later. I didn't switch out Michelangelo's weapons just because it just didn't make any sense to. But I think this is going to be the shot right here for these. I think it's going to look a lot better, especially once I add a little bit of extra light to those weapons right there. So I just wanted to reiterate that composing is important because I had to switch things up a few times when doing the picture for them. Uh, moved Donatello again more so he's facing the camera. Leonardo was actually leaning back and his foot was up a little bit, didn't like it. And Raphael's foot was definitely way off, did not like that at all. And again, tried to get a little bit of more of Michelangelo. And now things look a lot better. Took the photos, I actually put on my, old, my other lens, the first lens I was using back on just so I can get a few pictures with that because I actually really do like how the weapons look and I'm hoping that it'll come out good. I have the black light on but it is overpowering the camera so much but really simple solution got my iPad blocking the light somewhere around there and yeah the more I mess with it you can kind of see like you know different levels of the light somewhere around there is actually really good already took the picture wouldn't be able to take the picture this way anyway because both hands are being used right now but uh yeah i think that actually came out pretty good so i just set up and took the final photos right here of the turtles i think decent enough not going for anything too extreme might try and set up one more photo with shredder and maybe leo and uh call it a wrap so lastly i wanted to do one more uh little picture here and you can see how it came out right there <laughs> obviously you can't really tell so much with the camera because it is dark i turned off all the lights i blocked a little bit of light leak i had right there because it was getting in the way and these are the NECA turtles and actually let me just turn the light on here so you guys can get a better look okay so i have the NECA turtle set up here and these are the video game ones because it's the only one where i have three of them still waiting on michelangelo to be released um the other two i actually got way before on the ebay and uh, yeah that's just anyone confused on how i have Raphael because yeah the, those two are the, the older ones he's a newer one newer one newer one but yeah set them up here leonardo and um slash right right yeah they were pretty hard to actually kind of get set up especially with the swords kind of going right there uh, donatello wasn't too bad and i decided to just put Raphael kind of bumping into the foot soldier there thought it looked pretty good and what i did here to kind of change things up i took some pictures the same way i've been doing it with my light on and everything at least this light on right there uh my led one okay so the darker it is the more light from the back i get and 
I wish I had thought of this sooner. I'm not gonna go through and repose every figure to do it, but I used the flashlight app on my phone, aimed it to the ground and kind of like aimed it a little bit back so it bounced off the floor just a little bit, just enough so that although uh, I, everything was really dark and I had to have the shutter speed all the way up to four seconds again, um, the little bit of light that was bouncing off the floor actually illuminated, illuminated the turtles and the buildings enough that it gave it a really cool effect, which you guys will be seeing here soon, if not at the end of the video. I haven't decided where I'm putting these pictures yet, but I don't know, out of everything I've done so far, I think this is my favorites. Um, honestly, I think a lot of them came out really good. Uh, this is the more creative thing I've done here with this diorama, and I do have something planned with the NECA Turtles once I get Michelangelo and get everything set up for how I want it. Yeah, so looking forward to doing more turtle stuff in the future and more kind of dynamic posing like this because this this is where it gets fun. The uh, the cover number one thing is great and all, but the actual kind of like dynamic posing, something like that, where you can see the light leak right there because of the way I have this angled, but uh, yeah, it's this this is where it's fun. What's the best thing for Ninja Turtles in a hurry? Grab the pepperoni and ice cream! Pizza to go! Ninja Turtles! Action figures from Playmen! Alright, so that is basically the video for today. I wasn't exactly shot the way I'd want to, and the future ones will be better, maybe with a better behind the scenes, a second camera setup, so you can see what I'm doing more or less at all times, but obviously cut up because that took a good while, a lot longer than I thought it would, to actually set everything up, get the pictures I wanted lined up, and get everything the way I wanted. And like I said, the best thing about action figure photography, as opposed to regular photography, is time. As long as you have it, you can spend as much time as you want or need on the photo, posing the figure, redoing the figure. Yes, the articulation can get kind of uh, wonky sometimes, which is the only thing that sucks because, you know, not every figure is built the same, not every figure moves the same and trying to get them to stand in kind of a natural way, which is a big part of it, can get a little frustrating, but again, you have plenty of time to do it, which is a good thing. Now, I will say I'm gonna go back and reshoot the first photo because after going through them, I noticed one giant mistake I made, which just annoys me looking at it. I can actually hear my teacher from one of my classes kind of complaining about it right there, just just in my head. I can, I can hear what he would say during the critique in class, and I, I need to fix it because if not, it's going to drive me crazy. But in this photo right here, you can see Donatello's bow staff thing is going straight through Leonardo's head. Uh, I did do a test shot before where it wasn't and that one came out so much better because I had him leaning back. Even though the photo is fine, it looks pretty good and everything, that bow staff going through his head is not something you want to do in photography basically ever. Uh, if you ever take a picture of somebody in person, if you're taking a picture straight on, someone's standing there and there's a light pole behind them, you don't see the bottom of the light pole, but you see the top of the light pole going above their head, you don't want that. You don't want to see something kind of going straight through somebody's body like that almost ever. I'm sure there's definitely some cases where it's fine, but definitely in this photo, yeah, it's, it's not good. I mean, he's not even posed in the right thing. He should be leaning back a little bit more so you can see the entire bow staff going up. So I will redo that, and that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say for today. Uh, next video, again, hopefully will be better, and hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll try to go more into technical stuff in the future, and hopefully uh, you guys enjoy this enough, and I'll keep making them. I do have a few ideas, and I've been working on things for the next video, which if I'm lucky, I'll have out next week. My, that's my, kind of my goal, but I don't want to set any goal, because let's face it, anytime... I, I try and set a goal for this channel. It's just, uh, it, it, it never works out. No schedule ever works out here. Like, I, I did great for three months one time a couple of years ago, and then, yeah. Um, but hopefully we'll be at a somewhat regular pace with these kind of videos, because this is actually what I enjoy. Um, I like it. It's fun. I will be doing reviews at some point, but the photo taking part has always been the more fun part to me, the funner part to me. I'm sure there's a better way to English that. I'm an English major too, so that's actually kind of disappointing, isn't it? But anyways, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.